Good evening, brothers and sisters. Welcome to tonight's Bible reading and study. Pardon the way I look. We have been getting ready for our trip all day. As you can see, all the waters are loaded up. So we're just about ready to go. We need prayer for traveling mercies. I um, also found out today another one of our family members, my mother's husband's mother in uh, Florida, passed away either yesterday or the day before. So uh, we need to continue to lift up our family in prayer. Um, Just say your stepdad's mom. My stepdad's mom <laughs> passing away. <clears throat> His name's David Prater. I don't know what her name is, but... Um, God knows who we're talking about in our hearts. And uh, we have our, um, my aunt's, my dad's sister's uh, celebration of life on Sunday morning at 1030. So uh, the plan is we're going to do day four today. I'm going to talk with Sean and Donna while we're down at the cookout. Hopefully we will be able to do day five tomorrow night from the cookout in hell in Blairsville Georgia uh, if not then as uh, soon as I get back to the motel room we will do day five Saturday night or Friday night I will be um, showing um, dirt road disciples and uh, uh, preacher cotton I want to say it starts at either seven or eight o'clock so we'll be on just a little bit early but um, so I wanted to give you that heads up just as a reminder. Also, we finish up 2 Corinthians tonight with chapter 13. And since we're in Proverbs and we're doing the Song of Solomon, the Song of Songs as it's wrote down in the book, but it was originally called the Song of Solomon, um, we're going to go into um, Ecclesiastes next. Uh, I feel like that God's speaking to me, that he's speaking to all of us, the words of wisdom that come from um, Solomon, and he's actually spoke to me um, on Sunday night. We're going to read through uh, a little bit of Solomon's life in um, the book of Kings. I'm not sure if it's first or second Kings, I haven't looked at it yet, but uh, God's leading me to uh, introduce uh, Solomon to each and every one of you because he was the last king of the United Kingdom. And I find it amazing, and the more I thought about it today, brothers and sisters, throughout the day, uh, there was three kings of the United Kingdom, and that was Saul, David, and Solomon. And after that, they split up. <coughs> in the two kingdoms and the way that I see things going today brothers and sisters it's highly possible that we're going to split up again uh, they keep tearing down these monuments they keep uh, ruining the economy and it's uh, I don't want to get political but it's pretty much the uh, Democrats against the Republicans and uh, I've said it before and the Word of God demonstrates it because every time every time Israel forgot where they came from and where God had brought them from they were taken over and they were uh, held captive and their uh, kingdoms were their kingdom was split up, and even during Jesus's time, whenever he was brought before uh, Pontius Pilate, Pontius Pilate said he's a Galilean, he's from Nazareth, so he needs to go before King Herod, and not before him to decide his fate, which tells us that the, the kingdom was still divided in Jesus' time. And probably on Sunday nights, I'm getting ready to start a study of uh, 
Malachi. Yeah, Malachi. It's the last book of the Old Testament. It was done in 430. It was written in 430 B.C. And after Malachi, the next thing you hear of is Jesus. That's because God turned his back. His people were so rebellious, he turned his back. And they did not hear from God for 400 years. Again, brothers and sisters, we are in a time in which God has turned his back because of the people's rebellion against God in a nation that was founded upon God. So I'm going to start my study in uh, Malachi, and we're going to, on Sunday nights, uh, discuss Malachi one chapter at a time. It's a short book, but again, we're going to do one chapter at a time of Malachi on Sunday nights. And then the next six nights, we will do our uh, Proverbs and Ecclesiastes. So that's the plan going forward again this Sunday night. Um, because of everything that's going on, we're going to introduce you to King Saul. Just so that you fully understand, again, if you forget your past, you're destined to repeat it. And again, it's very important God sent us here was to learn his wisdom but how can we learn the wisdom of God unless we understand how God gave wisdom to Solomon and how God um, worked on Solomon and created such a wise king? None of them were perfect. But again, uh, you'll find out in Ecclesiastes that uh, God was working constantly on Solomon. And Solomon wasn't always blessed. But again, you'll find out the wisdom that comes from God. It, it basically reflects where we're at today. So we're going to go into, uh, first of all, prayer. We want to lift up my family, give us traveling mercies. Uh, pray for uh, both sides of my family as uh, we do the celebration of life for my Aunt Eudina on Sunday and uh, let's pray for uh, David Prater my stepfather uh, my mother's husband so that um, the family will make the right decisions the wise decisions under God and how everything is handled with this pestilence and again she's in Florida so uh, there's a lot going on in Florida so we want to if they have to travel we want God to remember them as they travel uh, we want to remember all of our brothers and sisters brother Larry I know he's at home we want to praise God he had his surgery today hopefully he will heal from that pain uh, I'm not sure what kind of pain he's in right now but I'm pretty sure he will be experiencing some type of pain and any time you go cutting on the body, even with God's hands upon the physician and medical teams, there's, there's pain associated um, as the body heals. Just like in affliction, as we have learned, uh, affliction <coughs> breaks us down to our core so that we will maintain good character. And I think Brother Terry has had his surgery today. I haven't heard anything, but we'll keep lifting him up and Sister T and Brother Frank and his family, uh, Sister Rhonda, Sister Miko, Brother Raymond, and uh, Sister Rhonda's daughter who's suffering from this addiction, Brother Iceman whose uh, father, he should have had uh, pacemaker surgery either yesterday or today. So uh, we hope that he's doing well. We're gonna to continue to lift him up. Um, we want to remember uh, Sister Miko and her family as she ministers to her, her and her husband, minister to her immediate family. <coughs> um, we want to remember each and every one of us. We want to remember this whole body of Christ because we got to stand firm in the wisdom of God and the obedience of God because the things that are going on in this world today is horrible. And uh, if we don't stand up now, there's going to be no remnant left. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today, first of all, to thank you for everything that you've done in and through each and every one of us' lives. 
We bring honor and glory unto you, Heavenly Father, for the workmanship that you have done through each and every one of us throughout the entire world. Some of them listening to this, Heavenly Father, are persecuted because of where they live at. It's a majority Muslim area, and if they get caught uh, speaking the word of God, they can uh, be killed or either um, punished for it. And they praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank each you for each and every one of our brothers and sisters that go out each and every day. It's getting even bad here in the in the United States, Heavenly Father, in North America, in Canada, in the entire world. As we watch the news and we listen to all of this going on, and we don't know exactly what to believe and what not to believe, but we do know this, that you, Heavenly Father, you are the way, the truth, and the life, life. And you are the creator. <clears throat> you are control of all things. And we humbly submit to you in that so we have no fear. For the fear of the Lord creates wisdom. So we fear you, dear Lord, because we know that you are the creator of all things. And we ask you, as I watch, and it's posted on our Facebook page, Heavenly Father, and I hope many have watched it. There is a great turning away. And as this young lady pleaded to God, pleaded to you, Heavenly Father, pleaded to Jesus, our Savior, do not leave me behind. And as he revealed to her in a vision, dear Heavenly Father, that you say the end time is closer than it's ever been. And I believe that, Heavenly Father. Even though it may not be in my lifetime, and Jesus doesn't even know the time until you, Heavenly Father, say it's time for us to go. But us faithful ones unto you, Heavenly Father, because your gate is wide, but few will pass through it. Please, dear Heavenly Father, use us as your workmanship. Let us be obedient unto you so that we will not be left behind. And we give praise, honor, and glory to you, Heavenly Father, for everything that you have done and are going to do. For I know in my heart, dear Heavenly Father, that through this body and through many other bodies that are working diligently where you have sent us to work, that there will be many, there will be a great turning towards you, Heavenly Father, a true turning towards you. And people will realize that when we forget our past, we're destined to repeat it. These monuments and statues, Heavenly Father, are a reminder of where we came from so that we do not repeat it. Yes, some look at it as painful. But true change is painful, Heavenly Father. For when we look back at our past, even when I look back at my past, Heavenly Father, it is painful to know the things that I have done that the people that I have wronged, the people that I have hurt, including myself, as Paul said, he had a thorn in his side, Heavenly Father, your apostle. I have a thorn in my side that punctures me every day, reminding me of where I came from. And we need this monument to remind us of where we came from so that we will never be ununited again, that we'll never be separated and we will fight for those things that truly, that truly will matter, and that is the fight for the things of you, Heavenly Father. And we give praise, honor, and glory unto you for, again, the workmanship that you're doing in and through each and every one of us' lives. We lift up to you, dear Heavenly Father, in petition everything, the littlest things, we lift up to you traveling mercies for us as we are on that bike and our brothers and sisters are on their bikes. And as my uh, middle brother, my blood brother of birth with the same mother and father here on earth. And my children are with him and his wife and my nephew that you give us safe travels, Heavenly Father, and get these things down to our brothers and sisters that are in need. For as we come together, we need this water to take care of us. 
dear Heavenly Father, to keep us strong, to keep us hydrated so that we, our bodies will not fail. No, it's not the water of life, but while we are there, we are going to be sending out the water of life, Heavenly Father. The water that comes from Jesus Christ. I know preacher Cotton, our brother Cotton, Heavenly Father, and he is a wonderful man of God, and he lifts you up at all times, Heavenly Father. And he lives for you. And I know he too has a thorn in his side. He's preached on it. And those who truly live for you, dear God, have a thorn in their side. They come from a checkered past, Heavenly Father. For they know the difference. And they know what happens when you turn your face on God. And we lift up to you, Heavenly Father, our brothers and our sisters down there. Every one of them have a thorn in their side and they come to worship they're going to come together and we know that the holy spirit will be there heavenly father we know that the holy spirit will be amongst us and jesus christ will be with us because we will be in one accord and they will be lifted up and many will come to see your true light for the ones we invite we invite so that they see the word of god and the true love that comes from jesus christ so that they too may know for sure if they died today, they would be with the Father and the Son in heaven. And they will be looked upon and said, "Good, well done, good and faithful servant. Let us leave none behind, Heavenly Father. We lift up in petition to you, dear Heavenly Father, our brother Larry, as he heals from his surgery. Our brother Terry, as he lives from his surgery, Heavenly Father, that you give them a pain-free or a pain-less healing so that they may soon get back to doing your good work. And we lift up Brother Dano, dear Heavenly Father, as he's suffering from these back issues. Hopefully you will give him the ability to go down with us because I know that he needs this. I understand that T must stay behind because <clears throat> she has to protect herself from this pestilence, Heavenly Father, so that she can have her surgery and be healed. And we understand that, Heavenly Father. And we give you praise for you protecting her. We give you honor and glory for the guidance that you have given her and Dano, a great man and woman of God. But it would fill our hearts if you give, take away that back pain for Dano to come down and be with us, Heavenly Father. And we lift up traveling mercies, Heavenly Fathers, for Sean and Trinity, Heavenly Fathers, and for Courtney and his wife, and for Hoppy, as we all travel together, Heavenly Father. And we lift up traveling mercies for Tracy and Pam as they leave in the morning for Conway, from Conway, Heavenly Father. And all of those traveling from Noonan, from Dawson, uh, Dawsonville, from Gainesville, from Blairsville, from Kansas, the Midwest, Heavenly Father, from Florida, Brother Creasy and his wife, but they travel up from Florida, Heavenly Father. And all of those traveling from New Jersey and all over the United States to come together, Heavenly Father, I know some of them are traveling right now, that you keep them protected so that we all may come together. For the glory of the Heavenly Father. And we lift up Brother Frank unto you, Heavenly Father, and we wish that he could come down and be with us. But we know that he has some issues going on, and we know that medical team, that you've got your hand upon them, Heavenly Father, and that you're going to put your hand upon them and guide them physicians and guide those medical teams and find out what's wrong with him and heal that body and give him the desire to go out. <clears throat> he has a band to go out and seek your word and give your word out, Heavenly Father. And he needs that band to be up and running and he needs his body, Heavenly Father, so he can go out and be the minister unto God that you called him to be on a daily basis. And we lift up his wife, Heavenly Father, as she supports him and everything and his family, his children, his sisters. And we give glory and honor to you, Heavenly Father, for protecting his mother in that nursing home surrounded by this pestilence, which she has not obtained. 
Many have died around her, but she has been kept safe. And we know that is your miraculous because we persistently, all the time lifting up her in prayer unto you, Heavenly Father. All of us together are lifting up to her, lifting her up unto you, Heavenly Father, and you are giving her protection and provision. And we lift up Brother Iceman, Heavenly Father, and his father as we pray that he heals, <laughs> Heavenly Father. I hope his surgery went well and that he got his pacemaker in the day and it's stabilizing his heart because we know that your hand is upon the medical team, Heavenly Father, and that you are going to heal that body because he is one of yours and you're not going to turn your back on him because you promised Heavenly Father you are our shepherd and we shall not want. You make us to lie down in green pastures. You lead us beside still waters. You restore our soul. You lead us in the path of righteousness for your name's sake. And even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil for you are with us, Heavenly Father. Your rod and your staff comfort us. Even though it causes us pain, your rod and your staff, it comforts us. It teaches us up in the wise ways. You prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemies. You anoint our head with oil, and we anoint each and every one of these tonight with the holy oil, Heavenly Father, that you will bless them, and that you will keep them safe and provide for each and every one of them. Our cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we will dwell in your house forever and ever. Amen, Heavenly Father. Amen. You promised that you will not leave us behind. And we lift up to you, Heavenly Father, tonight. Sister Rhonda and Brother Raymond, as they're taking care of those grandkids, Heavenly Father, as their mother is suffering from this addiction, that you take this addiction away as you took that drunkenness from the sailor whenever he was handed that pamphlet. <coughs> He was instantly made sober, and we know that you can instantly make her sober. And that you can take away this addiction, Heavenly Father, and give her the will to say no, that her family and her God comes first. And we know this, Heavenly Father, and we give praise, honor, and glory. We lift up to you all of those who are suffering from uh, chronic diseases, we lift up um, those who have uh, cancer, Heavenly Father. Brother Lewis, his cancer is shrink uh, shrinking, but he's in pain, extreme pain, and they don't know where it's coming from. And they're trying to find out where it's coming from, but we know he's a godly man, and you're going to put your hand of protection upon him, Heavenly Father, and you're going to take every bit of this pestilence from him and this pain from him, so that he can be glory unto you. And him and Norma have lost loved ones in the last few days. And we ask that you give them peace. Because they're going through enough without having to deal with this. But we know that you're going to give them peace, Heavenly Father, to know that they are in the house with you, Lord. And that they are suffering no more. We lift up to you, Sister Miko, Heavenly Father, as she ministers, her and her husband minister to her family, that we pray they come to see the light of the Father because we don't want no one left behind. The end is near. It will be soon. And if you choose for each and every one of us to see it, we pray that you do not leave us behind, that you will take us up Instantly, Heavenly Father, disappearing into the heavens, being united with our families and with God. And all we're going to want to do is worship the Lord God forever and ever. And dear Heavenly Father, as we all come together in one accord, as the Holy Spirit, I already feel the Holy Spirit within this walls, Heavenly Father. And I feel your presence, Jesus, among us. We pray that this Holy Spirit lingers and that it <coughs> reveals your word and your truth and your wisdom. And that it leads and guides us in all things, Heavenly <coughs> Father. For again, 
We are in your word in obedience so that we may know what is the true, acceptable, and perfect will of the Father. And we give praise, honor, and glory unto you for that, Heavenly Father. And all of these things we bring forth to you in the name of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, unto the Father, the one and only Creator, the one and only God that can unite all. Please don't turn your back on us. Praise, honor, and glory unto you, Heavenly Father. Amen and amen. Hey, Daniel. Yeah. Um, I was looking at Cindy's page. Yeah. Eight hours ago, she posted, came home just now from Terry's surgery, and the house smells so fresh and clean. Extra food was in the fridge and freezer, and here was a beautiful card and a gift from Christina and Daniel and the girls. Amen. So very thankful for all of the help every time when Terry has surgeries from all of them. Matt and Daniel and their families sure do take care of their mom and daddy. Blessed to have them all. Love each of you very much. Amen. That just shows, have brothers and sisters, God is answering our prayers. They're taking care of our brothers and our sisters. He said he will be a provider. We pray that our children will be working for God whenever they get old enough. To take care of when we became un become unable to take care of ourselves. Is there anything else? Okay, we're going to be in 2 Corinthians chapter 13. It's the last one of uh, 2 Corinthians. Final warning and exhortations. <coughs> this is the third time I am coming to you. Every matter must be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. I gave a warning when I was presented the second time, and now I give a warning while I am absent to those who sinned before and to all the rest. If I come again, I will not be lenient. Since you seek proof of Christ speaking in me, he is not weak in dealing with you, but powerful among you. For he was crucified in weakness, but he lives by the power of God. For we are we also are weak in him. But in dealing with you, we will live with him by God's power. Test yourself to see if you are in the faith. Examine yourselves. Or do you yourselves not recognize that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless you fail the test. And I hope you will recognize that we ourselves do not fail the test. But we pray to God that you do nothing wrong. Not that we may appear to pass the test. But that you may do what is right. Even though we may appear to fail. For we can't do anything against the truth. But only for the truth. We rejoice when we are weak. And you are strong. This is why I am writing these things while absent. <clears throat> so that when I am there, I may not have to deal harshly with you in keeping with the authority the Lord gave me for building up and not for tearing down. Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice, become mature, be encouraged, be of the same mind. Be at peace and the Love, God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints send you greetings. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise, honor, and glory, Heavenly Father. For we had just talked about this, and it's amazing how you work because I did not pre read this, Heavenly Father. But as Paul was warning the Corinthians, let us warn ourselves to not be left behind, that we may not fail the test, Heavenly Father. For we need the peace that comes within you. And we are here to build up, not to tear down. And we give these warnings so that all may come to know the glory of God the Father. 
For this word is plain, simple truth, and to the fact, Heavenly Father, your scriptures speaks to every one of us for your warning. It's amazing how you put everything together, Heavenly Father, because of the lady that you presented yourself to this morning, Jesus Christ, <coughs> our high priest. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Savior. Thank you, child of God, for showing us that we need to be ready, Heavenly Father, for the end is near. The coming of God, Jesus Christ, is near. So we must present ourselves a holy sacrifice unto you, Heavenly Father. Being obedient to you in all things so that we may pass the test. Not to again make us look better than anyone else, but to build up each and every one of us. To edify every one of us through your word, Heavenly Father. So that we will not be left behind. All of these things we bring praise, honor, and glory unto you, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. Give me one second, brothers and sisters. I'm marking my place. There we go. <coughs> Proverbs chapter 4, 11 through 27. I am teaching you the way of wisdom. I am guiding you on the straight paths. When you walk, your steps will not be hindered. When you run, you will not stumble. Hold on to instructions. Don't let go. Guard it for it is your life. Keep off the path of the wicked. Don't proceed on the way of the evil ones. Avoid it. Don't travel on it. Turn away from it and pass it by. For they can't sleep unless they have done what is evil. They are robbed of sleep unless they make something stumble. They eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. The path of the righteous is like the light of dawn, shining brighter and brighter until midday. By the way of the wicked is like the darkest gloom. They don't know what makes them stumble. My son, pay attention to my words. Listen closely to my sayings. Don't lose sight of them. Keep them within your heart. For they are life to those who find them and health to one's whole body. Guard your heart above all else, for it is the source of light, life. Don't let your mouth speak dishonestly and don't let your lips talk deviously. Let the eyes, let your eyes look forward. Fix your gaze straight ahead. Carefully consider the path for your feet <coughs> and all your ways will be established. Don't turn to the left or to the right. Keep your feet away from evil. Day four, the choice to embrace wisdom is important. Proverbs 4, 20 through 22. My son, pay close attention to my words. Listen closely to my sayings. Don't lose sight of them. Keep them within your heart. For they are life to those who find them and health to one's whole body. Noticing Solomon's urging for his son or sons or the men of his, young men of his kingdom to pay attention to Again, Solomon ur urged his son, sons or young men to pay attention to his words. He didn't want his sayings to go in one ear and out the other. He called his sons to listen closely. Don't lose sight of them. Keep them within your heart. Your heart is the center 
of your life. The benefits of living a godly and wise life are many. Solomon listed two in verse 22. First, the godly instructions, instructions for the word of God are life to those who find them. Secondly, they are health to one's whole body. Wisdom is beneficial and even life-giving to the wise, impacting both body and soul. For Solomon, the choice was clear. Avoid all wickedness. It leads to blindness and death. Embrace God's wisdom and lead that leads to light and life. Bring glory to God and result in a life of purpose and peace. Why was Solomon so repetitive in reminding his sons to remember his words? And I want to add something to that, brothers and sisters. He didn't just say, remember his words. He also said to listen. Just in these, just in this chapter, he said it three times. Listen, sons, to my father, discipline. Listen, my son, accept my words. My sons, pay attention to my words. Listen closely to my sayings. <clears throat> Again, we've talked about this before, brothers and sisters. We have to listen to God's word. For it is our life. Christ told the woman at the well, you are here to get water, but I can give you the water of life where you thirst no more. The water that comes from the life-giving flow of Jesus Christ's body, the water in which we will thirst for knowledge no more, for we will have God's word in front of us. For Christ gave us these instructions. He gave us this example to show us as Solomon is telling his sons, sons, or the young men of his kingdom to stay on the path of righteousness. To keep them in your heart for your heart is the center of your life. If your heart doesn't beat, you do not live. For they are life to those who find them and health to one's whole body. Again, I know, brothers and sisters, the destruction that comes from not being in God's word, how it kills the body, it destroys the body. For as the word here says, but the way of the wicked is like the darkest gloom. They do not know what makes them stumble. For when you are not looking upon God, you are blinded by the darkness. You do not know, you do not understand why all these bad things are happening to you. It is because of your life away from God because of your life away from the purpose in which he designed each and every one of us for. For when we find our purpose, we find life. When we find our purpose in God, we find our blessings. The darkness is taken away and the light reveals the blessings that can come from God. And we must remember to pay close attention so that we do not stumble again. Fixing our eyes. In verse 25 it says, Let your eyes look forward. Fix your gaze straight ahead. Carefully consider the path of your feet and all your ways will be established. <coughs> How can you look ahead if you do not remember what came from behind so that you will know what to look for? Man, it is amazing what God does and the way that he brings everything together. 
the way he shows his servants throughout the day and preparing them for the word that they're about to partake, showing them in the light of the examples of the things that are going on so that we may see those things that if we lived in darkness we would not see, so that we will not be left behind. Again, why was Solomon so repetitive in reminding his son to remember these words? Again, I revealed that the other night, brothers and sisters. It's very important to remember, to listen. He wanted him to remember again when we were growing up. If our parents said something to us three times, it was important. But we also probably got a spanking because we didn't listen the first time. Again, the rod and the staff, it comforts us. It prepares the table before us in the presence of our enemies. So that we may be anointed with oil by the living God, the light, the water of life that comes from the side of Jesus Christ, so that we will thirst no more, but we will see in lightness, in light, getting brighter and brighter throughout the day as the noonday approaches, for the noonday Christ will call us home. And that time is closer than we know. I'm not saying when it's going to come because not even Jesus Christ knows that time. But it is closer today than it's ever been. And I can honestly tell you that. It's closer today than it was yesterday. And tomorrow it will be closer than it is today if God doesn't call us home. But he is warning us through a godly sister who he appeared to in a vision. As she ran and she ran and she ran faster and faster and it seemed like Christ was getting further and further away. She ran, bursting out into tears, said, please, screaming out to Jesus, don't leave me behind. And Jesus said, for my days are close. My time is close. So we need to remember, brothers and sisters, that we're not guaranteed tomorrow. We need to speak to those who need to be speaking to today. I'm going to leave you with this story. And this is why it's so repetitive. This is why Solomon was repeating it over and over again. Because he wanted his son, his sons, or the young men to follow God. To listen to the word of God. It's a young lady. Drug addict. Coming to a church, looking for answers. Everybody, nobody talked to her. Nobody said hi. She come in, sat down, listened to the message. Nobody asked her if she knew the Lord. Nobody approached her. Nobody said hello. Nobody offered to give her the word of God. When she left there, she was killed an hour later, run over by a car. For we do not know what God is bringing before us. We should not forsake those times when God is speaking to us and telling us, my sons and daughters, pay attention and listen to me. For those I present to you today might be their last chance. Again, Solomon was repetitive in this reminding. And it wasn't just three times in here. But when we look back at the first several chapters of Proverbs, Listen, my son, to the Father's instructions and do not reject Proverbs 
My son, except, if you accept my words and store up my commands within you, listen closely to wisdom and directing your heart to understanding. Proverbs 2.2 2. Proverbs 3 1. My son, don't forget my teachings, but let your heart keep my commandments. Three eleven. Do not despise the Lord's instruction, my son. Proverbs 4, 1. Listen, sons, to a father's discipline and pay attention so that you may gain understanding. Proverbs 4, 10. Listen, my son, accept my words and you will live many years. Proverbs 4, 20. My son, pay attention to my words. Listen closely to my sayings. Don't lose sight of them. Keep them within your heart. Proverbs 5, 1. My son, pay attention to my wisdom. Listen closely to my understanding. Again, this goes over and over again. We can go through this whole book. Listen, my sons and daughters. Listen to God's word. That's why Solomon repeatedly said it over and over and over and over again as we parents say it over and over again to our children. Listen to what I say. Don't just, oh, I hear you. I got you. I hear you. Five minutes later, we don't know nothing. But listen so that you may prove what is the good, acceptable and perfect will of the Father. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for every word that's come forth tonight. We, we feel the Holy Spirit in here, dear Heavenly Father, and I feel the Holy Spirit within this presence. <clears throat> for I know where I came from. And I know the pain I caused. And the heartache I caused, Heavenly Father, and the pain that many have suffered because of my ways. But I thank you, Heavenly Father, and bring honor and glory unto you for bringing me and opening my eyes to that light. But keeping this thorn in my side so that I may understand the pain that comes from the discipline that you've given me, given me. And I give you praise for never forsaking me, Heavenly Father. For none can come to you unless they are called. And they are called through Jesus Christ to everyone. For God calls all. And he is a loving father saying, listen my son. Thank you Heavenly Father. Thank you for every word that has been brought forth tonight. Through the Holy Spirit, through your word not putting a single bit of the message into it from the, this vessel, but bringing it forth from the Holy Spirit, dear God. Speaking in plain English so that all may be edified. And thank you for the translations that come through this medium so that those who do not speak English may still understand this word that comes from the Holy Spirit. As Peter, before the 5,000, The many nations that heard your word in all their languages. 
for that comes from the Holy Spirit, Heavenly Father, and we give you praise, honor, and glory for every bit of it. Again, we thank you for our traveling mercies and our blessings that we have. We thank you for the, mer the miraculous healings and everything that you are doing, Heavenly Father, and the provisions that you are provi providing for our brothers and sisters, and we bring you praise, honor, and glory forever and ever. Through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, amen and amen. Again, thank y'all for coming tonight. Uh, again, tomorrow night, hopefully we can come together with our brothers. Uh, but we will be doing day five. Be aware of God's purpose for your life. Proverbs 4, 23-27, noting where your gaze should be fixed. Again, we will uh, introduce you to Ecclesiastes tomorrow night and then Sunday night. Uh, we're going to introduce you to Solomon in the book of Kings. And love y'all. God bless y'all. See you tomorrow night. Donald J, don't kill it yet. Typing. What was I trying to say? I'll, take, I'll message him shortly. Okay. Love y'all. I'm getting with Tracy. Okay. Peace out.